now on Older, Wiser, Feeling Younger, we have a TV weather presenter and environmentalist, Rob Jell. Rob, welcome to the program. Thanks, Barry. Now, of course, weather is very strongly interwoven with climate change, yep. which is a passion of yours. Yep. Now, I have a theory with us baby boomers. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, when we were driving our GT Falcons and Monaro GDSs, uh, we didn't care, you know, it was blowing out the lead particles and there was fresh air everywhere. And I think now, as, you know, some 40 years on, are realising we may have done some damage. No doubt we're a big part of the problem, but I think also very much now part of the solution. Because I think, I mean, I go back, it's uh, 30 years since, um, this, well, 30 years since I started doing weather on the telly, so it's 35 or more years since I was at the, in the tail end of the environment revolution and learned in the early 70s at university about some of the impacts of the sort of things that you're talking about. I mean, we have done, you know, we've taken lead out of, out of petrol and paint. We're doing a whole range of other things. We've done some things now to manage chlorofluorocarbons to damaging the ozone layer. We've got a whole lot more to do. In fact, I was speaking to a group just the other day. Uh, in fact, I was launching a book on environment for a mate of mine that I went through university with saying that the problems that we learned about in the early 70s are as real today as they were then, and most of them are worse. So, you know, we're really the we're really the generation that's uh, what do they say? We're the first generation that's going to be around to see the consequences of our actions, and we've got to understand that. Uh, the reality is we've got to uh, take responsibility for what we've done in the way we've designed our economy, the way we've designed the way we live, and understand that for our children and most baby boomers now are probably more concerned about you know, how their kids and their grands kids are going to grow up, we've got to understand that their life is going to be fundamentally different to ours and we need to make some decisions now both politically and in our businesses and in our daily lives that are going to help make a difference. So what on the simple level can we do? Well look, there are any number of things, I mean there's the, the obvious ones. The first thing, everyone should have their own personal climate policy and it's a simple three stage policy if you let me go through it. The, the first stage is to, is to use less energy. So we, in Victoria, we've got to think about uh, using about 90% less electricity per capita inside the next decade. It's a massive change. So the first thing we're going to do is turn stuff off. Like our parents told us to do, there are now very, very good reasons because we're frying the planet. So turn stuff off. The second component of that first one is to be more energy efficient. So that's all of the things that we know about. So it's complex fluorescent light globes. It's about uh, using public transport. It's about riding the bike and being healthier for doing so, or walking and being healthier for doing so. Uh, make sure you move to a fuel efficient car and there are any number of those around the present. I should say on complex fluorescence, and really we should be looking now, LED lights are uh, now on the market and they're even better again. So we need to be working out. And that, the, these sound like small things, but they're really important. The work speed or the analysis has been done that if Australia and the EU and Canada and California and Walmart and India do as they say they'll do to phase out uh, incandescent light globes and use compact fluorescence, it's the equivalent of taking 275 coal-fired power stations offline. So we can do that. Technology is yep. available today. The second major point is make sure you buy green energy. So it's a bit more costly, but we owe it to our kids to spend the extra money because the reality is our energy is too cheap anyway. We're externalising all the costs of its production to the climate. We've got to in, in, internalise those costs. And when all that's done, the final thing that you can do is actually offset. So you can go to an organisation like Greening Australia that I'm president of, go online, you can offset your, your car travel, you can offset your air travel, you can offset your annual energy bill. So in other words, you're planting trees and doing a range of other things to make sure you've accounted for your contribution of carbon to the atmosphere. Now in the next few years, or start, probably starting now, baby boomers are going to retire and they're going to cash in their superannuation and they maybe even you know, move house, move somewhere else. Yep. In, in, you know, in keeping in view of climate change, where would be the best place to live in Australia right now to minimise the effects of climate change? Let me make another really important point since you mentioned superannuation and we get to places, in fact I was at a lovely place on the weekend, I'm thinking about the same sorts of things Barry, so I'm right with you on that. Mm -hmm. The first thing they need to think about, because they're very concerned about their little nest egg in the superannuation, the first thing they've got to think about is where is it and where is their money being invested. If you really want to make some useful changes, and I say that to many people as I possibly can, think about whether you can move your capital in your super fund to somewhere that's uh, really making sure that's money, that money is invested in things that are a benefit to the planet rather than they're going to continue to stuff it up. I think I'm sounding optimistic now. <laughs> Rob Gell, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure.